Hi guys, welcome back to The Player. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at one of my favorite off-road cars. This is the Jeep Wrangler, and it's not just any Jeep Wrangler, this is the fourth edition. And this one is the Overland. Let's get it out on the road, let's get underneath the bonnet, and let's get around it and see if it's worth every penny of its 45,000 UK pound asking price. The Wrangler Overland isn't a sensible SUV. It's an SUV you buy because you love the way it looks and you love the image that it represents. Add to that the fact that the Overland is probably the best driving Wrangler ever, both on and off-road, and this is a winner all round. The Overland's off-road ability is more than sufficient for most detours off the pavement, and we took it along numerous off-road tracks and ploughed it through massive puddles with tons of mud and it never missed a beat. There's some underbody skid plates, there's a decent low range gearing system and there's also a full time four wheel drive mode that you can leave it in. And to see how you're tracking, Jeep includes information in the gauge cluster about the Wrangler's pitch and roll, its steering angle and you can get tyre pressures up as well. Getting behind the wheel of a Wrangler is about managing your expectations because if you know it will perform well off road but be less than comfortable on road then your expectations are already met, you never know you might be pleasantly surprised. So let's start at the front, it's a better place as any. Um, you're gonna notice that immediately there's no badges on here, there's no Jeep badges, there's no, you know, nothing say it's an Overland or whatever, because Jeep say this is the badge, this grill. It's so iconic, you can't miss it, you know exactly what it is, even from a distance in your rear view mirror. Lovely looking car as well. It's not pretty, it's more chunky but sometimes bigger is better. And I like that because you feel very stable in this car as well. Okay, so you get LED headlights either side, obviously, really nice as well. You get the LED running light and below it is the LED indicator as well. And I love the way this all sort of blends into one big thick sort of chunky area down here. You get the nice fog lights down here as well. And this is so big, you could actually use it as a seat, which is perfect. It was probably designed, I'm not gonna do it, but to step up onto here, to have to step up on here for any reason that you might have to. But I love that. Now, another good thing about this is it's got a lockable bonnet. So you can't just, you know, someone come along and fiddle about with your engine. So you do need your key, even though this is keyless and we have to open it with the key. So you first of all start either side here, you've got these big clamps, which is easy just to pop them open like that. And then, I love this, real boys stuff, isn't it? Then you can put, lift that up there because it's waterproofed and then put that in and just, turn it like that, there you go. That then lifts and then you just pull that to the right and look at that, one dirty engine. <laughs> and the reason it's dirty is because we've had loads of fun with it and this is what it was built for. This is exactly what it's built for. You don't want a clean engine, look at that. It needs a clean actually. Um, okay, so a couple of different engine variants. You've got, this one is the two litre petrol. It's a turbocharged two litre V, uh, four cylinder. Um, develops around 270 brake horsepower and the biggest thing of all with these engines is the amount of torque that you get because these things will pull a house down, they're absolutely amazing. Um, this is around 400 newton metres of torque which is incredible for a two litre engine, fantastic. It is available in a diesel variant on this, it's called a multi-jet and um, probably originally built by Fiat at some point knowing multi-jet engines. 2.2 uh, .2 litre diesel, it's um, again it's around 450 newton meters of torque. So you get a little bit more torque, but I much prefer the, the petrol engine. We're talking all about the economy and the gearbox when we get inside. And on that note, let's go and have a look inside round at the back. There I am, and you couldn't see me coming because of all that lovely midnight tint that they've put in these windows round at the back. I mean, not only is that, you know, gives you a bit of security, but at the same time, during the summer, that's going to reflect all the heat out as well and stop the sun coming in. Keeps it cool. Clever ideas, little great ideas. Speaking of ideas, I'm going to come around here because I want to show you a couple of bits before we get started inside. So ideas, well, on version four of this, the blind spot mirror system here, which is built into this radar here and connects to the mirrors down here, had to be pulled out a little bit. So they've reshaped these lovely LED lights at the back here and pulled them slightly out. So you'll notice it's that little bit, almost makes it feel wider. It's 
quite clever that. You've got your spare wheel on the back here because it's a Jeep. So you'd always have your spare wheel. You're not gonna have one of those stupid run flat things, not run flat, you know, space saver things that they put inside. Um, thank God, I hate those things. Right, you get an adjustable brake light on the back and you'll probably say, adjustable? Why would you want an adjustable one? Well, because not everybody just wants 18 inch rims on here. You can have bigger ones. You can go right up to like 22s, even 24 inch rims if you really want to go silly. But in order to carry the spare, and you're going to have a full size spare, you need to be able to have this adjusted so it can go up or down to the 18 inch size, which is what we've got in here. Okay, so along the back here, it is very chunky. It's very um, G-wagony, isn't it? Yeah, that's about as far as I go with that. But get your insignia on the back here. That is where you do see your Jeep. You've got your tow bar down here. That doesn't come as standard. This one's been put on because it's the press car and they put everything on it. So have a look inside. You've got a touch button here, which is really nice. You see the lights come on as well. It's split, so you've got dual ways of opening this, which is really nice because if you only want to put your bits in there, it's lovely. Whereas if you want to lift your boot up here, you can do this, look, and then you can shut that. And then during the summer, all of this comes off. So you can have it totally convertible at the back. And unfortunately, we're not in a position to do that at the moment because the weather's a little bit dodgy. So it might just suddenly shower and snow. We are in England, remember, which is really great. So staying back here, again, perfect. You're out on a picnic, you're taking the dogs out, you've gone down to watch whatever, a bit of sport or whatever. You've got this above you, which will keep you dry. It's really nice. And that's a bit of a windbreak as well. Let's have a look inside because here we have 500 litres of boot space. It's huge, massive. You know, your trips down to your, you know, B&Qs, your DIY centres, whatever, perfect. You can get everything in here. And these seats fold down and give you a thousand litres of boot space. So that's the almost double, yeah, well, it is double. Hey, I did do maths at school, somewhere along the line. Right, underneath here, there's a little panel that sits across here. And there's some holes in this little panel. I'm gonna pull it out and show you because uh, I quite liked, I like explaining this. So this hasn't been shot by a gun. This is purposely built for putting your bolts in here. And it actually tells you which bolts to put in it. Where are those bolts coming from, I hear you ask? Well, when you take this canopy off, this whole lot, you don't want to lose the bolts, because when you come to put it back on in the winter, you've lost your bolts, and you've got to go and buy another. Genius. Put them in here, and then put them in here safely like that. Before I put it back, also, there's a little sign there. This is for people who don't realise what's below here. It's a jack, and that means here is the jack for lifting it up. And you've got your little tool kit in there as well. Look at that, branded. Isn't that lovely? So that all sits in there, and this just pops neatly back in there like that. You've got another little area there for hiding bits and pieces, whatever you want to put. A lovely, nice, big, solid bit of carpet there. So anything that's going on there, this is all washable as well. Forgot to mention that. You can take this out, literally wash it, and put it back in again. Brilliant. You've got tons of tether points here. So if you're going to be carrying anything that might move around, it's perfect. You also get with this Alpine speaker system, simply superb. But this is all waterproof. This is totally waterproof. Why? Because if you've got this roof off, you see all this lovely roll cage as well. If you've got the roof off and all this back off and suddenly there's a summer shower, you don't want your speaker system ruined, do you? So Jeep have made it waterproof. Perfect. We love this. We really do love this car. It's a big boy's toy. Over here, you've got a 12 volt adapter. It's just, you know what? I love this car. But there's got, to be a, there's got to be a letdown somewhere. Let's go and have a look for the passengers, see how comfortable it is. Let's check it out in the back for the passengers. But before I climb in, I want to show you how this configures, how it folds down, because it's quite interesting. This is what I call an 80-20, because there's no separate centre section. And you've only got this section here, which is quite easy. You notice how the headrest pops down on its own accord when you lift the, the handle back there. It's quite easy to do, and watch how beautifully it folds almost completely flat there. And the space, if I was to lift this, I'd have to come round and get that one. That, you know, it could do with a handle here, which if you could do it all from one side would be absolutely fantastic. That's a little tip for you, Jeep. Maybe the uh, version five, you could do that. Be really nice. Or simply have the center bit, you know, ready for the B&Q, the DIY piece of wood that's got to go to it. What the French call the ski edge. Uh, yeah, okay. So. One thing to remember, when you're putting the seats back up, you must hold on to the seat belt in the back, because otherwise it gets trapped, as I've found out a couple of times, and then that just pops back there nice and neatly. You get isofix points either side over there. They're built in, again, rugged, chunky. They're there, no caps, no plastics. You don't need it. And look at all this lovely leather. 
very easy to wipe down when there's been a shower. If you've got some kid in the back here with an ice cream and it's spilt, just wipe it over. No cloth seating in the back here. It's lovely. Proper mats as well. I love it. Right, grab handle up here for getting in. Look at that. Just pull yourself up and straight in. Can't go wrong with this car. Everything's just built. I love sitting here. And I almost go as far to say as this seat is probably more comfortable than the driver's seat. It just feels that maybe it's been used a bit more. I don't know. I also love you've got these big speakers up here. Again, this is all waterproof because when this roof's off, you only got to get a shower. So again, this is all built, you know, for that, for that reason. That's what I love. Now, in the centre here, these are your windows up and down buttons. Again, they're rubberized, which is really nice. Down here, you get a little poppy outy. Look at that. That is a UK 12 volts. Well, it's a it's a proper plug that we use. It's very strange if you're abroad and look at that. But I do think here you can probably use the European one as well. That would probably go in there. That's great. That's really great. I love that. So if you've forgotten your adapter or your USB, you can just plug that straight in there. Really nice. And yet again, you get two USBs above there and then you get two USB-Cs above there. There's bags and bags of things that you can charge up in here. How much... How much more do you want? It's perfect. You've got these little sort of tray bits here. God knows what they're for. Maybe just for resting something when you're sitting bird watching or something. Centre bit, like this. This is cool. Push that down. Look at that. Double cup holder. Rubberized again. Really nice. So if it gets wet or whatever, you can just mop it out, throw it out. It's great. Um, another little thing. I've got my phone to show you. In the centre between the double cup holder, look, you just put your phone in there and that's what's that. That's just nice. Little things like that. I love that. Let's pop that back up. It's perfect. What's it like in the middle? Well, low transmission tunnel. Really nice. Wasn't expecting that. I thought it'd be a massive, huge transmission tunnel. Um, and sat here, you could definitely do a few miles here because you've got a lovely view straight out over the bonnet. You've got all this space around you. And when these pop up properly, you've got, it's just so light and airy. It's just really nice. Can't see any problems with, um, you know, road sickness, as they call it. It'd be nice. Get these uh, stupid waste of time. Don't know what you'd put in there anyway. So there you go. You haven't got independent rear heating or anything, but you do have the vents, so you can turn them off and on as, as you want. But it'd be nice uh, maybe in version 5 to, uh, to also add independent heating as well. It wouldn't, wouldn't be that much extra, would it, just to pop that in there. Loving this car, still loving it, still can't find anything wrong with it. Let's get round the front, have a look in the, uh, what, the, what the driver gets for the money, so to speak. And uh, maybe there we can find fault with this vehicle. Let's check out what it's like for the driver up front. You get this big step, which is really handy, and you get a grab rail here, which you can just pull yourself in like that. It's all chunky man stuff, I love it. Um, let's start her up because it's, uh, it's keyless, as we mentioned right at the beginning and I will push that, there you go. Nice two litre petrol engine springing into life. Beneath the manual handbrake is a little place to put your key. So I'm gonna pop that in there like that and then put the handbrake back down again because this is the auto version. Talk about that in a sec. Okay, now what I really wanna do is actually shut the door because this makes a warning sound if the door's open, we found that out. And then I'm gonna turn it off, but I wanna keep this on so you guys can see the screen. And there you go. Perfect. Right, we're all set up. Okay, let's start with the steering wheel. Really nicely set up. It's a manual adjustment up and down and pulley out. Not a lot of adjustment on this, but then once you get this seat set right, it's quite nice. You're so high up here anyway. Really, you want it about, yeah, just about there. It's perfect. Um, so on the actual steering wheel, on the right here is your cruise control and your speed limiter. Um, very simple. The lights, over here on the right, so you've just got a little one down here, you put them on manual or auto, dead simple. And then you've got your fog lights, you just turn it right the way around to the front, to the right. On the left here is your menu scrolling, so you can scroll up on the digital instrument panel, which is in the middle here. So it's analog either sides, digital in the middle. Um, and that you can set up all different, you know, how you want it. You can have a compass on there, you can have all the off-road bits as well. Really nice bits of off-road. Must show you that when we get off-road. Um, you've also got your telephone module on here and you've got your Ask Siri button as well, which is in the middle there. Because when it's linked up with your Apple Play or your Android mirroring, you can use your Siri or whatever you're using to talk, which is great. Now, nice big TFT touchscreen here. The good thing about this touchscreen it's waterproof, again, it's got this massive sort of rubberoid thing around it because, again, once you've opened this up, which is easily done by just unhooking oh, this whole roof, look, it just all pulls off so easily. I'm gonna do it then, but I'm not gonna do that because it'll take forever if I 
with want to show you around the car. Um, so yeah, that all comes off. That gets wet. So they've thought about that yet again. And again, down here with the, the window up and downy buttons here, they're made of rubber. So they're, and again, next to it, look, the media button here, underneath, inside, there you go, USB down there, USB-C above, aux in on the left, all covered up. Again, so if it rains, it's not gonna get wet in your electrics. I love this car, it's so perfect. 12 volt adapter in there. So many adapters in here, it's just madness. Um, central heat, ah, oh, guys, here we go. It's knob time. Right, let's get your knobs out. Let's have a look. Here we go. Get in here with gloves on. It's cold. Don't want to take your gloves off. It's all about the size of the knob, guys. There we go. Three of them, all in a row. Three black knobs. Oh, they're big. You can keep your gloves on. You don't have to touch them. You can just turn your heating up. Perfect. You can even put your front heated seat on. Well, you don't need to. If it's really cold, this car senses, and as standard, the Overland gets heated steering wheel. It's on there. You can turn it off or you can turn it on. But sub-zero, it automatically puts a heated steering wheel on and your front heated seat as well, the, the driver's seat. Great. You don't even need to take your gloves off. So you can fiddle with your knobs, get your heating all right, get your tunes on. Away we go. Take your gloves off. Nice heated steering wheel. And you've got a hot bum as well. Can't go better than that, guys. Um, so down here, we've got the off-road section here. The off-road business section, as I like to call it. This is your two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, high and low selector. Very simple, if you've driven a four-wheel drive before, you know you need this. This car is available in a limited slip diff, so if you want it, you just have to ask extra for it. You've got a lovely auto gearbox on this. It's an eight-speed auto gearbox, stunning. Just sings along, and when we've taken it off-road, it really knows its business when you tell it what you're doing. It senses everything. Double cup holder again, it's exactly the same as the one in the back, so brought the mobile phone to show you. Look, that just pops in the middle there rather nicely. Um, up here, you've got a dual aspect, a dual aspect or a duplex, <laughs> as I like to call it, glove box. On the top here, this is uh, made of that sort of sticky stuff that you can uh, pull out and clean and put your coins on. And it's, oh look, it's actually like magnetic there. It's really nice. Um, and then inside, massive great cubby box down here. And yet again, another USB. There's USBs everywhere. Glove box, not the biggest in the world. However, you do get a camouflage Jeep manual. You don't need these. Let's get rid of these guys. Let's put the money into, this can be done on the internet. You can go to a website, you know, like all your white goods when you buy these days. Don't get manuals with them. Go online. You can download them yourself. You really want to print them out. But manufacturers, listen, get rid of them. Give us some extra bits for nothing or included in the price that that was costing you. There's a, there's a tip for you. Throw that back in there. Not the biggest, but without it, reasonable size. Um, seating, comfortable, love it. The whole situation set up here, nice and high, out on the road. And on that note, that's what we need to do with this car. We need to get it out on the road. Not only on the road, this car has some fun of it because it's been raining over here in the UK for over a week. And that means it's wet out there. Let's go check it out. <laughs> So here we are guys, we're out on the road in the Jeep Wrangler Overland. And the first thing you're gonna notice is it is very quiet. It's very sophisticated. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting not a bag of nails, but you know, a few rattles here and there, a little bit of plasticky, maybe tinny sounds, but listen to that. It's really smooth. And that two liter engine, this is the petrol version by the way, very quiet indeed. And bags and bags of torque. Don't forget, this has got 400 newton meters of torque under the bonnet, which is a lot for pulling power. But also, it means that the revs stay quite low, so this car sort of poodles along really quietly. Um, you do get a lovely view in this car as well. Um, you're very high up, 
So consequently, you get a good view over the cars in front of you and you can see sort of anything that's coming towards you and it's, it's pretty safe, to be honest with you. And speaking of safety, well, you get the blind spot mirrors, you get the autonomous braking in town, um, you've got the, like I say, the cruise control, I mentioned that earlier, you've got the, um, the speed limiter. There's lots of lovely bits and pieces, four airbags up the front here. It is, it's quite good for what, you know, for what you're paying for. And speaking of money, I mean, these cars, this, the Wrangler Overlander starts at around 45,000 UK pounds. And I think that's pretty good value for money for a car that you're, you're getting a lot. You're getting a bang for your buck, guys. You really are with this car. One, you get, you know, you've got the fun of that summer taking all the roof off. Two, in the winter, when you need it, when it snows, when it's wet, when it's windy, you know this thing's going to get you home. It's, it's equally as good. I hate to say it because I'm a Land Rover owner. I've got a Disco, you know, a proper Mark 1 Disco, and I do proper green lane and I go off-road with it. But I've taken this off-road. You've seen it, what I've been doing with it. And this thing will get you home. It will sort you out. It will look after you without a shadow of a doubt. And, it, well, you're going to say, well, what's the drawback then? Why haven't we all got Wranglers? Well, there is a drawback. There always is, as, as there's no such thing as a free lunch, as my dad used to say. The drawback with this is the economy. And the economy really is poor, I've got to be honest. I'm barely getting 20 to the gallon around town. Um, you know, I'll be honest, Wrangler don't claim big figures on this. They're, they're not worried because, don't forget, this car comes from America. And where is petrol cheap? Well, there's two places in the world. One is America and the other place is the Middle East. And unfortunately, I live in neither. I live in the UK and petrol is extremely expensive. Um, we're talking over five pounds to the gallon, five UK pounds. So if you can work that out in your own currency, if you're watching this abroad, it's a lot of money for some, for some juice. Um, so, you know, the Americans weren't thinking of economy when they built this engine. They were more thinking of the, the lifestyle element of this vehicle. So when I had a friend of mine out in this car the other day, he was waxing lyrical about his Land Rover and his Range Rover. And I said, well, to be honest, this does everything that your Range Rover can do. And, and, you know, equally can match it off-road as well as on-road because it's very comfortable. And he agreed with me. And I said, what does your Range Rover get to the gallon? And he said, well, it's around about 34, 35. So you're getting, what, about 14, 15 miles to the gallon more than I'm getting on here? Yes. And how much did you pay for your Range Rover? Well, I paid £75,000. OK, so you, you basically spent £30,000 more on your vehicle than I'm spending on this vehicle. Yes, he replied. Of course he would. It's, that's what, what it is. So I said, in three years, I'm not going to spend £10,000 a year more on petrol than you're going to spend. I'm just, it, just, just do the math. I'm not. So basically, the way it worked out was, you know what? It might only do 20 to the gallon, but for the sake of, you know, a bit of fuel economy, you're not going to lose out when it comes to value for money. And the residual value, that's a big thing on this car. These are very, very popular cars, and the residual value on them is huge. It's between 45 and 50% of a car that's nearly four years old. And that I've got that as official. That's, that's incredible for a car you know, of this age. So brand new car, three years' time, it's still going to be worth at least half of what it was when it was brand new. Servicing, warranty, well, it comes with a five-year warranty. <laughs> Can't really complain at that, can you? Um, it's... It just does everything it says on the tin. And apart from the economy bit, I can't fault it. It's got a great screen up here as well. I must mention the touchscreen. The TFT is the bigger screen in this. It's waterproofed around the edge. It's fantastic. When the roof's off, you can see it really well. It's just the way it's lit. And the definition on it, on the actual sat-nav side of it, is really, really good indeed. I wasn't Again, I wasn't expecting a decent sat-nav out of... Um, out of Jeep, I was expecting something a little bit, you know, old garmin -y style or something where it's all jittery and doesn't, you know, the actual, but no, it's a really, really good system. And I, I, I've totally used this car both on and off road and it has, you know, it's got me home and that's been the main thing about it. It hasn't skipped a beat. You've been watching me, AJ the player. I thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, then please do, you know, like, subscribe and comment. Comments really down to the fact if you want to know something more about this vehicle or I've said something wrong and you think I need putting right please view the comment section and I'll reply to you if it's a half decent comment I have to wade my way through them quite often but there you go it's not um, you know you will get you will get a reply back that's for sure um, 
as I say, we, we, we are part, well, I haven't said, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I have to tell you, we are part of a bigger organisation called The Player. And The Player is a 200-page bookazine for men. And if you're into your man stuff like golf, like wine, like cars, boats, you know, everything we do here on The Player YouTube channel, then how about a free copy of our magazine because you watch me on AJ The Player? Well, you can have it. There you go. But you can only have it online. I can't send them out to you. That'd be costing me thousands. It'd cost me millions to send them all out. Um, but if you want to go online, you don't, I'm not going to take any details. Not interested. No data collaboration, all that rubbish. Just go in, put your email in and subscribe and you can have that bookazine whenever you want it online or download it, whatever you want. It's great. I've got to say, it really is great. I love it. And you get it for free because you watch me on, on YouTube. So... Go and uh, fill your boots. Go to www.theplayer.co.uk. There you go. It's just come up. How's that for you? I've even given you the website details. Simple as that's what I like. Um, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next week with another car, another boat, an interview. Who knows? But while well, in between that time, safe driving and take care. Enjoy life, guys. <laughs>